Hey, what's going on guys? Today I want to talk to you about the newest lens in my collection and as my youngest son would say, my most favoritist lens in my collection and that is the Sigma 120-300 Sport Lens. Now, I initially wasn't going to do a review on this lens because there's already quite a few reviews out there and pretty much everybody who's used it has nothing but good things to say about this lens. But I was out talking to a couple of photographers the other day and they do mostly portrait work and they've got some very nice equipment and one of them was talking about getting more serious into sports photography and he was talking about buying a Canon 3 or 400 millimeter lens and I mentioned that I had recently bought this and you would have thought that I insulted somebody's mother or something because both the photographers gave me this puzzled look like why would you buy that lens and they had seen my work online and they asked if the sports pictures that I had recently posted were taken with this lens and I told them that they were. And they were absolutely shocked that this lens produced that high quality of an image. And I think that not so much that it's underrated from people who use this lens, but I just think that there are a lot of people out there who just simply aren't aware of how good this lens really is. And that's the reason why I decided to go ahead and do a review. Now, I have shot with the Canon 300mm. I used it for about a month uh, towards the end of this last football season. I shot some tennis with it and cross-country wildlife and things like that. And it's a great lens. And that's going to kind of be the base to what I compare this to. So, why did I buy this lens over the Canon? I had the money. I could have bought either one, but I went with this one. And there's two reasons why I went with this one. First of all is this lens zooms. The Canon 300mm is a prime lens, it's a fixed focal length, you've got 300mm. This goes from 120 to 300 and when you shoot sports, obviously the action moves and it gets closer to you and it moves farther away from you. And with a fixed focal length lens, that can be a little bit of a problem. Now you do have the option of carrying a second camera body, which I did and when I shot with the Canon 300, but it's kind of a pain transitioning lenses. And the other problem that I didn't really like was, let's say I was shooting with the 300 millimeter and I had a second camera body with the 50 millimeter lens. That meant that I had a 250 millimeter gap in my focal range. And a lot of times I needed to be somewhere in between. And so that's a big plus of having this is you don't have those kind of huge gaps. The other reason why I selected this, well, it was 6,500 reasons because that's how much the Canon version 2 300mm cost is $6,500. This is about $3,600, so that's almost $3,000 in savings. Now, I'm a small business owner and $3,000 is a lot of money to me. So, sometimes I have to make trade-offs and sometimes I have to make... Uh, I don't want to say cut corners, but sometimes I have to decide, is the image quality good enough for me to use this? And in this case, it was. I had to stop and sit back and analyze how I shoot, who I shoot for, and what are those images being used for. If I got hired tomorrow by a professional sports team, I would probably buy the Canon 3 or 400 millimeter lens to shoot with. And here's why. The biggest concern that photographers have when they talk about a lens, it tends to be sharpness. How sharp is the lens? And is this lens sharp? Yes, it is. Is it as sharp as the Canon 300mm? No, it's not. It's just a function of this being a zoom lens. A zoom lens just isn't going to be as sharp as a prime lens in most cases because it has to be able to cover an entire focal range, whereas the prime lens is designed to shoot at one focal length and it does it very, very well. So, I know that I'm giving up a little bit of image sharpness with this, but how much am I giving up? Well, if you look at imaging scores, this lens is more comparable to the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter lens, which is considered to be one of the sharpest zoom lenses ever made. And I've never heard anybody complain about how sharp a 70 to 200 millimeter Canon lens is. Now, it is just slightly behind the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, but it's in the same ballpark. So the images coming out of this are pretty sharp. So why if I was shooting for professional would I go with the Canon lens instead of this one? And the reason is because if you're shooting for a professional major sports organization, you're going to need every bit of sharpness because your images could be put on billboards for bus wraps, the large banners that are hung outside of stadiums, things like that. 
And at those large sizes, you are going to want every last bit of sharpness. The reality for what I shoot is I shoot a lot of high school and youth events. That means that my images are getting posted online. They might go into a small town newspaper. And when I sell prints, they tend not to be bigger than 11 by 14 at the largest. And a lot of the prints I sell are even smaller than that. At those small resolutions, you're, or at those small sizes, you're really not going to notice the difference in sharpness. And for the web and newspaper print, you're not going to see a difference. But when you start blowing those images up to billboard size and things like that, yeah, you will see the difference. And so that's why for me, for what I shoot, this lens is plenty sharp enough. And I challenge anybody to sit there and look at a, an image that's posted online and tell me the difference between a Canon 300 and this Sigma lens. So yes, there are some sharpness issues, but there's some, excuse me, some sharpness differences between this lens and the Canon lens, but it's not all that significant. And you get the huge cost savings and you get the ability to zoom. Now, there are other things that need to be considered whenever you are deciding which lens to purchase. One of them being weight. This lens weighs in at 6.7 pounds. The Canon 300 millimeter weighs in at 5.2 pounds. I didn't think that pound and a half difference was gonna make that big of a deal, but it is kind of an issue. With the Canon 300 millimeter, if I was out shooting sports and I needed a handhold for a while, I felt completely comfortable doing it without any issues. With this thing, it does not take very long for my arms to start shaking and my back to start hurting. So there is a weight issue. Um, I took this thing out to shoot some wildlife and I got tired of lugging this lens around after not very long. So weight is an issue. I highly recommend you get a sturdy monopod. Um, I threw this on a cheap monopod the other day because I had forgot my good one and I actually thought that the uh, bottom leg on that Sunpack monopod that I had bought at Best Buy was going to break. I mean, it's aluminum, but it was bowed out and bent because of the weight on this. It, it's a heavy lens. The other question is it autofocus. How fast does it autofocus? And it's very, very fast. I can't point you to any kind of scientific studies on how fast this focuses versus the Canon 300 millimeter but I do feel like this lags behind. When I shot with the Canon 300 millimeter, it seemed like it focused instantaneously. I know that it didn't focus instantaneously because that would be impossible, but it seemed like it. With this one, I do notice sometimes whenever I'm rapidly transitioning from one subject to another and back and forth, that on occasion I will lose that first frame might be out of focus. Not all the time, but sometimes. So I do feel like this is a little bit slower, but that's just, me telling you based on shooting thousands of shots that it seems a little bit slower. The other thing that I think is a disadvantage with the Sigma is the teleconverter. The Canon 300 millimeter with the Canon 1.4 teleconverter focuses amazingly fast. The images are amazingly sharp. I really don't see a huge loss in image quality with the Canon combination of teleconverter and lens. With this, lens and the Sigma 1.4 teleconverter, I do feel like there is a fairly significant slowdown in autofocus speed and also that the images are softer. Um, I also did run into some issues with the teleconverter not wanting to autofocus with backlit subjects. Um, not all the time, but in certain situations it did happen. And in those situations, I took the teleconverter off and just with this lens, I was able to achieve autofocus. So I don't think it's so much an issue with the lens as with the tele Sigma teleconverter. Now that's with the uh, older teleconverter. That's not with the newest one that Sigma has come out with. Now, whenever I bought this lens, I actually had intended on buying the previous version of the 120 to 300 of the OS version. And the reason why I was gonna buy the previous version is that optically inside the sport and the previous version of this lens are exactly the same. If you take them apart, everything inside is the same. And so I wanted to get the other lens and save even more money. The problem was when I was looking around on eBay for a used copy, either the people were wanting way too much for it, they were wanting almost the same price as what this lens was used, 
and or the uh, the sellers just really had bad feedback and I wasn't comfortable with making the purchase from them. So I went ahead and got the sport version. Now the sport version, basically, as I said, optically it is the same. What you get is you get some extra features over here. And with the older version, all you have is your auto focus, manual focus button, and then you have your image stabilization button. With the sport version, you get the focus limiter switch, so you can change it from 10 feet to infinity or less than 10 feet or, or excuse me, 10 meters or you can have it on the full range. Like, if you know that the subjects you're gonna shoot are gonna be quite a distance away, you set it to 10 feet to, or 10 meters to infinity, and it will speed up your autofocus. You also get the custom functions down here, and let's say you wanna set a custom autofocus distance, you can do that using the Sigma Dock. Now, I did get the Sigma Dock, but I have not used it yet. It, it does have some cool features with it, uh, it allows you to make adjustments to this lens if you, let's say the lens is front focusing or back focusing and you need to make adjustments to it, you can do that using the Sigma Dock. The Sigma Dock only works with the sport version lenses at this time, so it wouldn't be compatible with the older version of this lens. Um, you can also use the Sigma Dock to make adjustments to this lens as far as its autofocus. Do you want it to be faster or more accurate? And you can make some uh, nice little custom features to this lens. I haven't used it at all because I'm very happy with this lens. The performance is uh, more than adequate as far as I'm concerned. Even shooting this wide open, I think the images are fairly sharp. Or uh, not fairly sharp, I think the images are very sharp. Um, if you stop it down, like most zoom lenses, it gets sharper as you stop it down but you don't have to stop down to get quality images out of this. So, like I said, if I was gonna be shooting in a situation where I felt I was gonna consistently need very large prints, I probably would pay the extra money and get the Canon version of the lens because you are gonna want as much sharpness as possible. Not that this can't deliver large prints, it's just you wanna get as much it, you want to get as much out of the lens as possible if you know that you're going to be magnifying those images to very large sizes. But for what I do, I think this is a great lens. I even used it to shoot some wildlife. I think that it's a little bit on the short end for shooting wildlife, especially on a full frame body. But still, it's the longest lens that I have at this point. And so I used it and I'm very happy with the images and I have no buyer's remorse with this thing. At some point, I do plan on adding the Canon 300 millimeter lens to my collection uh, simply because it is so incredibly sharp, but at this time, it just didn't make sense for me economically and for what I'm shooting for me to spend that extra money. So you guys can take a look at the sample images from all the different events that I've shot here in the last couple of months with this thing. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below and thanks for watching. Have a great day.